This time, Evidence Paranormal travels to Bartonville, Illinois, to the Pollock Tuberculosis Hospital, built in 1949. And despite their courageous efforts to save lives, could the spirits of the dead buried on the cemetery grounds be using attachment as a form of communication? Whatever you do, don't ignore them. They might get upset. Once again, we were packed and headed north into Illinois. Another three hour drive. And when all was said and done, we definitely got what we came for. The Pollock Hospital sits near the Peoria State Hospital for the incurably insane. There were many rumors in the past of abuse and neglect which were quickly dismissed as false. This location's ghostly tales are rather unique in that the spirits here are not so negative. But we certainly wouldn't know that until we exposed ourselves to this location. And that's exactly what we're going to do. In 1902, construction began on the Peoria State Hospital for the incurably insane. In 1949, the Pollock Hospital was built on the same grounds to serve the needs of the patients brought there from the state hospital that was suffering from tuberculosis. And after the many years in operation and hundreds of deaths within, many stories have been passed down of eyewitness accounts of spirits who still roam the halls of the vacant medical building. Most of the hauntings are believed to be due to the patients not wanting to leave because this place treated them well. Here, they were comfortable. This was home. Across the entrance lot is one of the cemeteries where many of those that perish from the disease are buried. You couldn't help but feel for these lost souls, the victims of this terrible disease. They passed on in large numbers, so fast that they used pre-made headstones that had patient numbers carved in them rather than names. When the historical tour began, this is in fact where we gathered. The site of this old cemetery was definitely something to behold. The hospital is said to be haunted by a much-loved patient, Manuel A. Bookbinder, or more commonly known as Old Book. He worked with the hospital burial crew. Rumors have it that his spirit was seen by over a hundred patients and nurses during his funeral. 
The attendees wandered around for about 30 minutes, taking photographs, before moving along beyond the trees into the next much larger burial ground. Up here in this larger landscape, the attendees were able to spread out and take many more photographs. Check out that orb picture. Is that over here or is it Oh my gosh. <laughs> They're everywhere. Wow, it's like the one we got from over there. Holy wow. Show awesome. me. Like a nebula. Here, many more great photos were taken and shared with one another. The sparkles and spots in our photos were indeed amazing to look at. But whether they were paranormal in nature, or just dust particles floating in the air, we could not determine yet so we have to dismiss them as evidence. In this photo, we caught two unusual objects. No, they're not ghost bugs. They're merely insects in flight, reflecting light from the flash back to the camera lens. Unfortunately, many people around the world make that mistake. With the arrival of nightfall, we moved indoors where we finished out our tour. We then quickly went into investigative mode. But what we didn't expect is that the other side was already waiting for us. Half an hour after the tour ended, we were setting up an IR camera in the hallway just outside what we were told was the male death ward. Just before leaving the setup, Mary began noticing a change in herself and her perception of what was going on around her. She decided to walk outside and get some air while I finished closing up the equipment. Minutes later, she came back, but she didn't look that much better. How are you feeling? Where's the camera? It's in there. I think you should interview me. Hmm? I think you should interview me. That was not right. All right, what happened? We were standing there. We are getting ourselves set up. I started feeling hard to breathe. You can hear it in my voice still. And then I started getting super light. I don't know if it's heat, but the breathing, that doesn't make sense to me. But if I started getting really woozy, moral heaviness, if I walked out to that bathroom and it started to lift, I was sitting in here. But before that, I was starting to sit in here. I was asking you, look, you're... you're you shouldn't do this. You need to get away from me. God, please send the Holy Spirit down upon me and take this away from me. And it started to lift. That's when I went to the bathroom. And, and it lifted completely. But that was not normal. As you can see, I'm feeling better now. Now that I went out there, actually, a lot of my strength is actually coming back to me. I felt super weak, super lightheaded. There was a pressure in my chest and it was hard to breathe. Sounds to me like the classic case of a spirit who died from tuberculosis trying to make contact. When situations like this occur, the best the lead can do is to remove that investigator from being exposed to that environment.
not taking any chances. I walked her outside to evaluate her health and decide whether or not she was stable enough to continue. For 10 minutes we sat outdoors and endured the insects while we tried to bring ourselves back to a more relaxed state. After a little fresh air and a little grumpy resistance from her to get back in the game, we both agreed to go back inside. However, now that someone on the other side has tried reaching out to us first, our alert levels are, of course, on high. We weren't going to take anything around us for granted, knowing they always have the winning hand. For us, the approach is respect and never provocation. They deserve that much. I just wonder what method of communication they might use next. It's already been a couple hours and nothing seems to be happening. I wander from doorway to doorway, using my various senses to tell me if I should continue going or stop and investigate. The Halloween dressings can be very distracting sometimes. But you got no other choice but to look past the disguise for the real paranormal clues. Sometimes, instead of it being in front of you, it could be following you. In the distance, I noticed four other people at the other end of the hallway. To avoid disturbing the energies around us, we remained at our end of the hallway and went into the nearest room. We're staying away from other guests to avoid any chance of contamination or disturbances. What's my name? My name is Nathan. Can you say that? Can you say Nathan? Is it that you know I'm not afraid so you can't feed off me? Nate? Not Nate. Nathan. REM pod's going off. What? Uh, down in the REM pod, down the hallway. As I left the room to respond to the REM pod alarm, I noticed that two of the four people I saw earlier were walking our way. Reacting to their information, I of course went down there to inspect the equipment. From this camera's point of view, here is what happened at that end of the hallway.
limited. Two times in a row? That is without a doubt a classic moment for Evidence Paranormal. Unfortunately, we did not know what we caught until we got home and reviewed the footage. And now we're off to other dark areas in the Pollock Hospital. Throughout the evening, this camera saw a lot of people pass in front of it. But the one the camera was intended for, I almost didn't see. A light anomaly, barely visible. With no active ventilation, it's definitely not dust. And definitely not insects either. It goes diagonally and then floats downwards. Could this be residual energy from somebody who died there? With one hour remaining, we finally moved back into the men's death room. Here I decided to use the obelisk and the REM pod. that device on the floor over there? I'm 
looking at something I sat on the floor over there. Can you touch it? It's called a REM pod. You don't really even have to touch it. All you have to do is start to touch it. We hear there's a lot of activity here most of the time. And you're very friendly. Can you light that on the floor? Did you hear that? Is that you? When human beings, alive or dead, talk, they give off a signal. The energy that drives a human being is what you guys are. Because you're still human. You just don't have a vessel. You exist there. And I'm sure you have a vessel there. Maybe it's a body, maybe it's not. Maybe it's whatever you imagine yourself to be. Maybe you imagine yourself to be in your youth. Or as you were when you passed. Or both. But whichever. You are not forgotten. And we still have an interest in connecting with you. You and a void. What's my name? Let's try that again. Say my name. Tells me no. <laughs> yeah. See? <laughs> ha ha ha. Can you say ha ha ha? Won't say my name. Tells me no. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Within minutes, we found ourselves with an audience of the living, probably thus resulting in all activity to flatline. Therefore, I gathered and packed up all our gear and pondered just what type of evidence we might surprise ourselves with upon review. Our evening at the Pollock Hospital was to us a total success. From Mary's sudden overwhelming illness when we first got there, to the hallway scare with the REM pod, and the Ovilus hits. We were thankful to have been permitted to attend this paranormal hunt. If these were in fact the spirits of the long deceased from the days of the tuberculosis period, then we humbly thank them and wish them well. <laughs>